welcome you into our your lives, Father. As we start off this year, God, we lay before you who we are. We'll let you take over, Father. The old ways are past. Here all things are made new. We want to see your kingdom here, King Jesus. We invite you to lift your hands up this morning. You are so good, Jesus. Let us take this moment, these moments that we have, and let us dive into his presence. Let us seek his glory before we seek things, before we seek blessings. Matthew 6, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will will be added. Let's seek his kingdom.
let us come before him with contrite and humble hearts. With whatever you have. Go before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Trusting that he will do something great. Trusting that he will do something great. Let us give him some worship. Let us give him praise because he is worthy, amen. For a few seconds, take a few seconds and just give him all hand praise with your lips, with your mouth, hallelujah. This is our God. This is our King. It's 2024 and here we stand, amen. Who's ready to give God everything this year, amen. Who's ready to give God everything you have, all your strength, all your might, all that is within your soul, within your spirit, within your mind, amen? Because we're so small before him. We're so, such small creatures, yet he has this immense love for us. And it enables us to do something great for his kingdom, amen? It enables us to bring great praise to his name. It enables, up to, it enables us to bring great worship to his name, great honor to his name from such small creatures, from such insignificant people because of the great love that God has for us. Amen. Before we continue, thank you, Matthias. Amen. We're going to uh, present a couple announcements that we have for today. And, and petitions that we have that our church, our brothers and sisters. Um, we continue with our services, our English services at 10 a.m. And our Spanish services at 11.30 a.m. Amen. Um, as we kick off the year tomorrow, beginning tomorrow morning, we will start uh, our consecration. We're, we'll start our prayer and our fasting that will last until January 28th. So tomorrow, January 8th through 28th. Amen. So if, if you want to start off on the right foot, if you want to make the most of the year and completely hand everything over to God, I recommend, I invite you to participate, to be part of this. Because it's, it's not just our church. It's not just... Um, a few churches, it's, it's the whole apostolic assembly, we're all partaking in it, so that God be the driving motor and motive this year, amen. Thursdays, another reminder, at 7 p.m., we have our, our Bible lessons, and we have our prayer. If you want to continue uh, to be part of it, if you want to continue to grow, I invite you as well. Um, in, a, in a few weeks, our leadership seminars um, will be January 18th, 19th, and 20th in Spring Valley. You'll find more information on the pamphlets out in the back. They also have a QR code. So they, we, we're, giving, we're, we're being given all the tools to, to, to prepare for what God has for us this year. Amen. To be a, an asset for the kingdom of God. We're, we've been, we're being given all the tools. All we got to do is say yes. All we got to do is show up, and God will do the rest. Amen. Uh, we continue to pray for the healing of, of our brothers and sisters that are suffering from different kinds of cancers. You'll see the name. The name's up here. Um, we're asking God for a miracle. Amen. 2024 is a year of miracles. 2024 is a year where God is going to do great things in Jesus' mighty name. So as we prepare uh, our offerings, as we prepare our tithes, I'm going to invite our ushers as well. We're going to say a prayer for our, all of our brothers and sisters, our friends that are in this list, amen, and pray for them 
so that God does something in their lives. In Jesus' name, I'm going to invite you to lift your hands, close your eyes, and with a heart full of faith that we're going to go before the King. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Jesus, as we worship you, as we praise you, God, as we bring you honor and glory, Jesus. We don't forget our brothers and sisters who are on this list, God. Every name, Father, every family member, every friend that is here, God, in this list, Lord Jesus. Let this year be a year of a miracle for their lives, God. Let this year be a year where you bring full and complete health to their lives and to their immune systems, Lord Jesus. That you no longer let the cancers multiply, Lord, but you cease the activity that you cease, Lord, the multiplication of cancer cells, God, that you freeze them, Lord, and that you take them away, God, and that, that, that we may see that miracle, Lord, and our faith may increase, Lord, and the family members of those who are suffering through this, God, that they may see this and have faith, Lord, in the living God who you are, that you are Jesus. I ask you for every name in this list, Heavenly Father. I ask you for all, the, all, the, all my other brothers and sisters who are suffering from other illnesses, God. That you provide a healing for them, Jesus. That you provide, God, a complete and whole uh, uh, healing for their lives, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name, God, we believe this, Father. You are a great God. You're a mighty God, Lord. You have healed before, Jesus. And there's no doubt that you will heal again, Father. Call unto me and I will answer, says your word. And that's what we're doing together, Lord, as one church, Lord, in one accord, in one peace, in one mind, Father. As we prepare our offerings and our tithes to bring them to you, to honor you, Lord. In faith, Lord, I ask you for my brother and sister who's, who's bringing an offering, Lord, and a tithe. God, that you bless their lives, that you bless their, their work, Father, that you bless their, uh, their, their homes, Jesus, and those who do not have, Lord, that you bless them and multiply them, Lord, and provide for them, Lord, and that you provide the need of every single one of us that are here today and those watching online, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and say and joyfully. And I call.
Thank God for his mercy and his love and that he does call us friend, church. We are blessed beyond measure, beyond understanding to have the goodness of God in our lives. I'm so grateful for what God has done. I, I know many of you have been going through so much this first week already. Uh, people have been, there's been sickness and illness and all kinds of manner of issues that have been happening in this beginning of 2024. And uh, it's not an easy thing as we go through this time period, as we go through this, but God is at the wheel, church. God is at the wheel. He is driving, and he will make it all make sense in due time. And we will be victorious in the name of Jesus. I said we will be victorious in the name of Jesus. Before we dismiss all the Philo's Two Fish, just a couple um, of things, and I, and I want to share this with Philo's Two Fish because um, sometimes they don't get to hear everything, but um, before I make this, this announcement, I want to thank our treasurers. Uh, they have prepared all of the reports uh, for 2023 already. You know, banks don't have to get it done until like February something or other, but they get it done right away the first week. We're so thankful for Brother Andy and Sister Debbie. Um, it's also Brother Andy's birthday today, praise God, and we're thankful for that. It was Alessandra's birthday during the week, praise God. So uh, that's some good news for us. But please remember to take your tithing report and your um, offering report. Uh, they're in the back uh, under everybody's name and envelope. Please remember to take that. Brother Andy, may God bless you and grant you many more years of life, you and Alessandra, as he blesses you this day with the life uh, he has given to you. Um, speaking about life, uh, it's, it's, uh, I just learned right now, and it's a, a sorrow for me to share this, but I want to thank everybody for praying for Camille Jan. Uh, she went to be with the Lord this week, and so uh, we want to pray for the Flores family. We want to pray for uh, their family, their their. Uh, grand grandchildren uh, and their uh, sons and daughters pray that God's comfort will be with them and we're going to say that prayer right now and that's why I keep five loaves two fish here with us five loaves two fish if you didn't know um, Camille Jan was very young and she uh, had been diagnosed with cancer and she's been on a fight and uh, we never know how much time we have we never know this last week we uh, said our goodbyes to brother Julian and a funeral service, and he lived He lived a good life, praise God. He got to a, a good age. Sometimes the Lord takes us early. Sometimes the Lord takes us at a very young age. The Bible says no one knows why the righteous are taken, no one except God. And so, Philo's Two Fish, I want to share this news with you, as sad as it is, to lose such a baby in the Lord, to lose someone who didn't even have a chance to live any part of their life. Yet we know that she will be with God, for she is, she is tender in, in, in her days. And uh, we pray that the purpose that God had for taking Camille at this time will be revealed to the family, to be revealed to all of us, so that we recognize that God is good. And God knows why. Sometimes he takes us to withhold us from the, tre from the problems and the issues that are yet to come. And so we want to pray for the Flores family, pray for their uh, their family as well. And Brother Roger also asked us to pray for Liliana Tovar, uh, who's going into a surgery soon. And so we want to pray for Liliana. Um, sister Mena, how's your sister doing? So for those who could not hear, Sister Maggie sends her thanks for the, to all the congregation for praying for her. Uh, the doctors had said if she hadn't had the surgery, she could be paralyzed. If she had the surgery, there were definitely complications. But she's walking in the name of Jesus. She's picking up her food. She's recovering. And I'm glad that the men as are back. They went to see her and be with her to comfort her. And we're certainly grateful to hear that good news in Jesus' name. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord right now. And, and we'll dismiss Philo's Two Fish. If you could stick around and say this prayer with us right now. You, you, you can leave as soon as this prayer is done. But we want to pray. Uh, we also want to pray for Yolanda Trujillo. Um, she, she was taken to emergency, uh, this, uh, yesterday, pastor, two days ago, Thursday, she was taken to emergency, um, and we've had her on our prayer list, but, uh, she was, she was in very grave condition, 
but she is awake now and she's eating food, praise God. So uh, we're going to ask that you continue to keep her in prayer. She attends our Spanish congregation. Um, she, she sits over here in this area. She brings a couple of her grandkids with her. And so um, we're going to pray that God heals her so that she can continue his good work, if, if anything else, in bringing those grandkids to receive the gospel and to continue to grow in Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask the congregation to just lift up your hands. Let's say this prayer with heavy hearts, but also with hearts of gratitude for what he's doing in Maggie's life. Lord Jesus, we give you honor. We give you glory, God. We thank you for you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And Lord, all things are in your hands, Jesus. Everything, God, from the day we are born to the day we go to the grave and even thereafter, Lord, all of life is held by your command, God. We give our lives to you, Jesus, and we give this prayer to you, Lord, asking you, God, to comfort the Flores and their entire family, Lord Jesus, for the loss of dear Camille. For we know, God, that she is no longer in pain, no longer suffering, and we praise you, God, for the work that you have done in her life. But we pray, Lord, for the hearts that are suffering today, Lord Jesus, that are going through such a difficult time, God, and we thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer over her life, Jesus for doing a work in her, Lord, but we pray for a clarity of understanding, Jesus. And Lord, that you would help mend the hearts that have lost a beautiful young child, Lord Jesus, but also, Lord, that you would help them to move forward with a message that you would give to them, God, a message of life, a message of hope, and a message of salvation, Jesus. We thank you, God, for this hope that you've given to us through the blessing that Maggie Vargas has received, Lord, our sister in Christ, for you have her up and you have her walking, Jesus, and what a great blessing it is to hear of this good news, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, for Sister Yolanda, Lord Jesus, who's in the hospital today, that you by your right hand, God, would uplift her and uphold her, Lord, and bring strength and power back to her bones and to her body, Lord. That your word would enter into her room where she is, Lord Jesus, and that you would speak to her mightily, God. Oh, Lord, that you would bless Liliana Tovar, Lord Jesus, as she goes through surgery. Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon her and every doctor, that, her me that your message would be heard by her ears, Lord Jesus, and that she would come, Lord Jesus, to understand your goodness and your glory and your majesty. We pray for these things along with all the other many little blessings that we have, including the birthdays and the, uh, and the Orozco family, Lord Jesus, that we celebrate today. God, we ask you for your blessing day after day. Don't let us go, Jesus, until the final hour has come, God, and it is time for us to go home. But keep your church, keep your people, keep your spirit alive and moving within us, Lord, that it would all be for naught, Lord, if it wasn't for your goodness and your mercy, Jesus. Help us to get to the very end, God. Whatever the number of our days, Lord Jesus, give us strength, give us your truth, and let your blessings follow us, that the world may know that there is a God who lives and that we serve this mighty God. We thank you, Jesus, as we dismiss our children to five loaves, two fish, our youth, our young people, Lord Jesus, that they may go to their classes and that you might anoint this preacher before you to speak your word boldly, God, that we would all be filled and satisfied today and ready for the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As you're standing, if you wouldn't mind, please Open your Bible to Proverbs 2, 7 if you don't have it with you as our children are leaving the room. If you don't have it with you, it will be up on the screen. It's a simple scripture as I was reading to my children this week that God gave to me to share with everybody. It comes out of Proverbs 2, verse 7. It says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. You may take your seats in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There are so much in the scriptures to be found about the Lord being our shield and our buckler. And there is so much about the soundness in God. And as I read this scripture, the two words sound and safety came up over and over again. Sound and safety. And I, I think there's a reason why these words uh, rang true to me because in banking we have something called safety and soundness and I said well Lord that doesn't quite fit the message and God said the world the world never does <laughs> it's always backwards amen but in banking we have something called safety and soundness and it's the measures for which the government puts into place 
to try and make sure that banks don't fail, and when they do fail, that there is a plan involved for what is about to happen. But I searched the term safety and soundness so many times all across the internet, and there's songs about soundness and safety. There's uh, companies that are built on soundness and safety. There's security companies that are built on soundness and safety. Uh, Brother Andy, I believe you, you work in soundness and safety for construction projects and all kinds of things. So soundness and safety is important to us. Amen? It's important to our society. But society has a way of doing things to try and form soundness and safety on our own, to try and make it happen. Last week I talked about cities and how, how cities are formed and they're a way for humanity to try and protect and bring out safety above and beyond what God wants us to have. The words safe and sound are often used in um, emergency situations. I imagine Brother Brian has to use this on a regular ba basis to tell and proclaim that that uh, someone who was in harm's way is now safe and sound. And the term usually means that they are out of danger and unharmed. I don't know that we're always unharmed, but the out of danger and unharmed. And isn't that where we often want to be? We want to be out of danger and we want to be unharmed. The problem is the world wants to do that. And they want to be safe and sound. But the scripture doesn't promote being safe and sound. It promotes soundness and safety. It doesn't promote safety and soundness as the banking culture wants to have. But it wants to promote soundness and safety. Amen? Let me give you an example of this. The Bible gives us the law. But the law is not given to the righteous, as 1 Timothy 1.10 says. Uh, it says it like this. Go ahead and put the scripture up there on the screen for me. Next slide. It says, understanding this, the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. Amen? Notice as he goes through these scriptures, those are the commandments of God, right? The lawless and the disobedient, the ungodly and sinners, those are those who do not believe ungodly. They believe in false gods. They don't believe in the one true God. The unholy, the profane, those who profane the name of the Lord, amen. Those who strike their fathers and mothers, the Bible says to honor your father and mother. For murderers, the, the Ten Commandments says thou shalt not murder, amen. The sexually immoral, the Ten Commandments teach us to, to not be an adulterer, amen. Uh, and then it talks about uh, liars, that's a commandment. Perjurers, same thing as liars or people who, who, who give false witness, bear false witness, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. Amen? So the law is given, and the law is good. Amen? But the law is given so that we learn how to have sound wisdom. It's given to us as sinners so we can learn how to walk right. Amen. How we can learn how to walk uprightly. So when Israel was coming out of Egypt and they had learned 400 years of Egyptian wisdom, Egyptian knowledge, Egyptian lifestyle, and they, although they were uh, segregated and kept on their own, there was still a whisper of who and what God is. There was still a whisper for a deliverer. And as the deliverance came, the, the commandments of God came to teach them, amen, to teach them what is good, to teach them what is right, to give them sound doctrine. As the proverb says, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. And the reason I say the world wants safety and soundness because they want to be out of danger and then be unharmed. Safety is out of danger, amen. The world wants to be out of danger. So we make all of these different rules and regulations to be safe. We try to 
stop wars before they before they begin so that we can be safe we build up banking systems and we design safety and soundness so we can be safe we make rules about how to build certain buildings uh, whether you're in a, a zone that's prone to earthquakes or whether you're in a zone that's prone to flooding or whether you're in a zone that's prone to, uh, to hurricanes and and tornadoes you build to try and keep people out of danger so that they can remain un harmed but the scripture doesn't work that way the scripture builds soundness to keep us safe amen god gives us the law or didn't give us law gave the jews the law so that they could live righteous they could live safe amen but Brother Johnny, they, they still had all kinds of wars, and they still had all As long as they had the word of God, they remained in God's safety. They remained in God's uh, covering, amen? And so you see the picture here with a chick in, in the hen's wing, and it ought to remind you of Psalm 90, 91 that talks about under his wing shall we trust, Amen? Because we have God's soundness, his sound wisdom, his sound doctrine. Listen to me carefully. The word doctrine simply means teachings or knowledge or lifestyle. Amen. When we talk about doctrine, we're not always talking about the 19 doctrinal points now. Did you know there's 19 now, right, Pastor? There's 19 now? They added one a couple years ago. Praise God. There's not, there's, they're not just talking about what we believe as an apostolic assembly or as a congregation of believers we're talking about how we live our life how the lord instructs us to live our life sound doctrine is sound lifestyle you see the law couldn't bring perfection because the same thing that humans do with everything else they do with the word of god and they corrupted the law they made the law to form and fashion their own desires of what they thought was right and wrong and good and evil so by the time jesus comes jesus says you you shut up the kingdom of heaven you, you you've taken god's soundness and tried to make safety over soundness what does that mean you try to take care of your position as rabbi, as high priest, more than you try to give people sound doctrine. We have to be careful with that, amen? Because in religiosity, that's what happens. We, we, we take our position and we want to make our position out of danger or safe before we're concerned about how we live and how we act and how we are. This is why many, many leaders, spiritual and worldly, are, become corrupt. Because instead of being sound, instead of being safe, uh, instead of being sound in the things of God, instead of having sound doctrine, they want to be unharmed. And in order to be unharmed, they start to build up their safety first, right? Why am I right more than you're right? Why should I stay in my position and you not have an opportunity in my position? And we see this happening. And so eventually they do things that are out of good sound doctrine, out of sound character, out of a righteous lifestyle to preserve their safety. And so in the spiritual realm, we have to remember soundness before safety. And we have to understand that the sound doctrine, the sound wisdom of God will bring his safety. Glory be to God. And so what is the sound doctrine we have? It is nothing less than the gospel. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4.3 if you can go to the next slide. It says, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. They will not endure sound lifestyle. They will not endure sound wisdom. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. You see, the world is trying to do the gospel, the same thing that was done to the law. It's trying to twist and trying to, and it's no longer standing it. People who want to live up for God and want to walk for God, the world is going to transform as it did in the days of Noah. I'm preaching to somebody here today because this is happening and we talk about the end days and I'm saying certain things that I'm hoping are going to trigger in your mind. But as they did in the days of Noah, they couldn't stand his lifestyle. They couldn't stand that 
abomination of what he was building because to them there was no rain in the sky. There was nothing. And they didn't want to believe the lifestyle that Noah had. They didn't want to believe the message that Noah had. And as long as there were no clouds in the sky, Noah seemed foolish to them. And so long as Jesus hasn't yet to appear in the clouds, we seem foolish. And so people will get other people to preach what makes sense to them. And they'll take the sound wisdom of God and they'll, they'll half-truth it. Amen. They'll split it up. They'll give you parts and pieces. But the gospel is pure. And the gospel is not corrupt like the world that we live in. Amen. The laws that were generated through governments, through societies, they've been tending towards better in certain areas. In some areas, it's still as bad as it's always been. Amen? That's because humanity, when they contrive laws, they're always contriving them for safety first. And the question is for whose safety? Thank God we belong in the United States or we pertain. I shouldn't say we belong. We pertain. We, we, our, our physical life is here in the United States because when they build a law, theoretically it's supposed to be for we the people. Right? But when they make laws in other dictatorial countries or even in theocratic countries, they make the law for the safety of who? Of the leader. The safety of the royal family or the safety of the elite. All right? The safety of the autocracy. If all this is going to your head, that's okay. It's just a little addition. Listen, because in Ecclesiastes 7.12, it says this, For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. Whoa, wait a minute. Wisdom is a defense just like money is a defense. Amen? Say amen. The Bible says it. It says, but the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who who have it all right so listen money is a defense and the world uses money as a defense a defense of what well the united states uses money to defend and build up its military amen the 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 wealthy use money to build up their safety net in case any hard times come they have plenty in the bank they, they buy out businesses to make sure that their money is going to last for a long time. They buy up resources to make sure that if, if economies go sideways, they have the means to be in power, to be in control. And so they use money as a defense, but money as a defense is empty. It's hollow because it only lasts, lasts as long as you are alive. Well, Brother Johnny, that's all I really want, is it? Is it? Because that is foolishness. If all you're concerned about is this lifetime. Amen? If all you're concerned about is this lifetime. Now, I'm not saying money is a bad defense. Don't get me wrong, okay? The Bible says money is a defense. The love of money is the root of all evil. So let's be mindful of the scriptures. But wisdom is also a defense. Praise God. And that's what we're talking about here today. Wisdom is a defense. It's a defense in what way? Because knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. See, you ought to know something. You ought to know that money is okay in certain circumstances. And if you have it, that's great and all. But you have to understand that money comes from the world. Amen? If your gains are worldly gains, your money will go as the world goes. But if your gain comes out of wisdom and out of knowledge, knowledge ought to tell you that wisdom gives life. Amen? In all of our scripture reading, in all of our learning, every time we read Proverbs, we ought to learn that wisdom gives life to those who have it. Jesus says in one of his Proverbs, he says, I will take from those who have little and I will give to those who have many. What is he talking about? Wisdom, life. And if you gain wisdom, you have a defense. What is that defense for? It's a defense of life. Let me give you the opposite of this understanding. In Psalm 38.3, it says, there is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. You see, wealth does nothing in the presence of God. Wealth does nothing 
in the white throne judgment. Yeah, you can say, well, I gave money to the poor or I tried to establish safety for people. Wealth does nothing. It is not sound. Okay? It is not sound. As a matter of fact, it can be a defense in this world, but it is not sound. And that goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. The world builds safety to be sound. It uses its money to build up safety, but we have learned over the years through recession, through pandemic, that the safety doesn't bring soundness. Amen? And we are seeing right now in the United States that the safety that has been built up over over 200 years of, of, of our history in the United States, it cannot bring sound lifestyles. There's corruption happening more and more. We have rioting. We have people against cops who are supposed to be the people providing safety in the streets. And we've got this turmoil happening, but it is the plan of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I'm going to say it again. It is the plan of the Lord. And so David writes, there's no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. When we take what we have, our goodness, our substance, our wealth, to the Lord, it's empty. There's no soundness. There's nothing you can stand on. There's nothing you can hold on to. There's nothing that prevails in the kingdom of God when it comes to wealth and things. When it comes to worldly things. And so there's no health because of sin. But knowledge teaches us that wisdom gives life to those who have it. Life comes through the fullness of grace that Christ has laid up for us to his eternal glory and his eternal joy. Amen. Soundness comes. that That's what has value. Real things have value. I think it's really funny right now how more and more you hear about people call, talking about, like, the matrix. I, I, I've been watching some, some debates online where people, people ask the Christian <laughs> debater, can you even prove that I'm real right now? Like, what? What? How far off are we that we don't even believe in the, in the substance that we are? How far off are we? But you know what? That's Okay. I'll take that. What's real isn't what we see. What's real is what is eternal and what is everlasting. And the difficult thing is sound wisdom here signifies essence. It signifies substance. Your wealth is not your essence. Your money is not your substance, but your lifestyle is your essence. Your lifestyle is your substance. That which is real, that which is solid, that which is substantial, that is what is laid up for us in heaven. Those are the glories of the world that is to come and the crown of righteousness, the hope that is laid up in heaven. Let me read to you Colossians 1.5. It says this. It says, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before... In the word of the truth, the gospel. And this is what I'm trying to get to today. When I read to you the scripture in Proverbs and when I read to you this, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. You see, a lot of people, they just want what God has. A lot of people, they just want the good things of God. They just want to come to God and say, yeah, you said I could have it. I want it. But you've got to believe in it and you've got to lay your hope there. What does that mean? Jesus Christ is our hope and our salvation. And he has laid up in heaven the hope before us so we can begin to understand and see and know what is real. And draw from it and grab from it and live for it and be in that hope. 
You see, every time we walk around saying, oh, my gosh, things are getting crazy. Uh, COVID's back. Oh, my gosh, the flu is around. Oh, my gosh. We don't rely on the hope, the sound wisdom of God that is laid up for us, that is stored for us. We allow ourselves to become grounded, and we allow ourselves to trust, whether it's in medicine or science or the wealth of this world or money itself, and we become empty we become hollow and there's no soundness and we begin to seek safety the way the world does and we want safety over soundness but God says my soundness will bring you safety what soundness God the lifestyle you live what you believe in what tenants you hold true to in 2024 because of the hope laid up for you in heaven this ought to drive our lifestyle this ought to drive, our, and, and, and safety will come next because the gospel says, the proverb says 2-7, that the, the, he layeth sound wisdom for the righteous. Let me, let me before I get to the safety, I got to say this last part. He lays it up for the righteous. If you're not righteous, you can't get sound wisdom. God stores soundness. He stores wisdom for the righteous. If you're not among the righteous, you don't have access to the wisdom. And so we become like every other Gentile, living life by our cultures, by our means, by our history, taking pride in the past and our, where we come from and the rasa and whatever else. Amen? Amen? We go to our hobbies to give us joy. And we depend on our lifestyle to get us through the day. And we start to cope. We start to cope with whatever it is we have that we feel doesn't make us feel empty. And we cope. Nowadays, people are coping with marijuana because it's legal. Coping with cannabis because it's legal. It's okay now, Brother Johnny. The law doesn't say we can't do it. I'll leave that one up to you. I'm not preaching against cannabis. I'm preaching against emptiness. I'm preaching against sin. And that's why the Bible instructs us to stay away from strong drink because that is emptiness. That's why the Bible teaches us to stay away from sexual immorality because that is emptiness. That's why the Bible teaches us to live modest lives and not to become extravagant because that leads to emptiness. And that is not sound wisdom. That is not sound doctrine. That is not a sound lifestyle. It may make you feel safe. It may make you feel good. And that's why sin has pleasure for a season. But the flesh seeks safety, not soundness. That's why billionaires will still act immature and act unethical to get more millions, even though they already have billions, because they're stuck with safety and not soundness. Listen to me, church. If you start dipping your toe saying, I'm going to make sure my family's safe. I'm going to make sure I'm safe. I'm going to make sure my job is safe. I'm going to make sure that is foolishness and that is not Christian ethics. That is not Christian lifestyle. Christian lifestyle says my soundness comes from the wisdom of God. My safety comes. The Christian seeks soundness first. The Bible says don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust decay, but store up treasures in heaven. It says seek ye first the kingdom of God, and after that all these things shall be added unto you. The Christian seeks soundness first. Where? In the word of God, in the presence of God, in prayer, in fasting. And that's why we're starting 2024 tomorrow with the day of consecration and 21 days of fasting and prayer. Why? Because my soundness comes from the Lord. My protection comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. 
He layeth sound wisdom for the righteous. Now don't get me wrong, righteousness is not what you do and it's not how you behave. Righteousness is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel of God. And when you believe in Jesus and you, be- and you repent and you get baptized in his name and his spirit fills you and you have his indwelling, now you walk around in righteousness and now you have access to the sound wisdom that is laying up for you in heaven. Now you have access, church. You have access. That's why the gospel says that you have no need for anyone to teach you anything. That you have no need for any resources. You have no need for any wealth. You have no need from the wisdom of this world because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And now you have everything you need because you've got access to sound wisdom that is laid up for you. You've got access to hope that's laid up for you in heaven. So when your child is sick, don't say, I'm going to go to the doctors because that's where safety is. Say, in Jesus' name, I know that you are my safety and my soundness. God, fill us. I love the testimony that Brother Johnny Sanchez, Pastor Johnny Sanchez gave many years ago when he hurt his leg. He was in great pain and he would lay in his bed and his leg couldn't move and he was in pain. He said, I bought an iPad and he didn't know what it was good for. But in that nighttime when the iPad screen could light up and he could read the scripture, he said, as long as I read the scripture, the pain left my leg. I would put it away and I would try to go to sleep and the pain would come back. But I'd pull it out again and I'd read the scripture and the pain would go away. Our safety is not in our solution. It's in the lifestyle that God gives to us. That's what all the Old Testament's about, church. Whenever Hezekiah went to the Lord, he said, my safety isn't in the military. It's not in Jerusalem. It's not in the walls. It's not in the water. My safety, God, is in you. You stated you made this place. Now help us. When Moses was up against the Red Sea, and the Egyptian army was coming against Israel. And they said, we should have died in Egypt. It would have been better to live in Egypt than to die out here. They wanted the safety of Egypt, the safety that they once had. But God said, stretch forth your <laughs> stretch forth your rod, Moses, for my safety is better. My soundness is better. In other words, walk where I teach you to walk, and you will receive my safety. Oh, come on, church. And when they walked through the Red Sea, the Egyptian army couldn't stop them, couldn't catch up to them. And as a matter of fact, that wall came down and, and drowned all of their past, all of their sins, all of their suffering, and brought them to the place that God had called them to. The second half of the scripture, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. We've been talking about it all along. Psalm 91.4 says, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Those who live a righteous life, those who live in God, those who trust in God, when you walk, you've got the shield of God all around you. You've got the shield of God all around you. Ephesians 6.16 talks about the shield of faith. What is the shield of faith except that we have Jesus Christ and we have his blood and his righteousness and the sacrifice that he had. And when our faith lay hold, lays hold to that, we use it against the shield of God against Satan's fiery darts. Faith was, that, that shield of faith was the same thing that, that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 15.1. That David talks about. Let me read to you Psalm 3 3. I don't, I don't have this one in there. Let me read to you Psalm 3 3 and what it says. Hallelujah. The purpose of these 21 days is to set aside the hollow, amen. It's to set aside the corrupt. It's to set aside whatever in 2023 had been creeping in unawares in your life. What had been affecting your access to the soundness of wisdom, what had been affecting your access to hope, what had been affecting your access to heaven. And so David says like this, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me from his holy hill, Selah. He is our shield. Too many people want access to the soundness and the safety in Christ, but don't want his shield, don't want his precepts, don't want his lifestyle, don't want the walk. Hallelujah. 
2 Samuel 22, 3 says, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. David knew that if he wanted the shield of God, he had to live in God first. So he lived in God, and then he said, God, shall we pursue? Shall we pursue the Amalekites? Shall we go against the Philistines? Shall we, God? Shall we, God? And when God said, yes, you shall, he said, that's my lifestyle telling me to go and be victorious. That's the wisdom of God leading my life. And I, I take refuge in that rock. But he knew that he could not separate the shield from the salvation. He couldn't separate the shield from the salvation. Too many people want the shield but don't care for the salvation in God. They're like, well, I believe that ought to be enough. That ought to give me access to everything. You've got to walk in his salvation every day if you want to be saved from the violence. If you want the safety, you have to have the soundness first. If you want the safety, you have to have the soundness. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet as I get to my last scripture here. Does anyone know what a buckler is? I looked it up. All the times I've read in the Bible, I get what a shield is. What's the difference between a shield and a buckler? You ever seen those little shields, just circular? They just kind of hang on the arm. They're just kind of a little bit. That's a buckler. Well, Brother Johnny, why would you use a buckler instead of a shield? You see, because a buckler allows you to use your weapon better. If you have a big old shield, you're always trying to come out from around it to attack the enemy or to. It's really for defense. The buckler is for a quick defense while having the ability to use the rest of the arsenal that you have at your disposal. And so when the Bible talks about in Ephesians the armor of God, the shield, and it talks about the buckler in the Old Testament, we have an arsenal, amen? The shield is for defense in the time of need from the fiery darts. And many times they would use the buckler just to quickly put it over them to cover from the arrows. You don't need a shield to cover your whole body from the arrows. You just need the buckler so it covers your head and your major parts as the arrows come down. 2 Timothy 2.15 says this. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who has no need to be ashamed. Rightly handling the word of truth. You've got your buckler. You've got your shield. Do your best to rightly handle this. And that's what these 21 days of consecration is all about. Doing your best to present yourself to God as a worker who has no need of, of shame. If you feel like you cannot make a sacrifice to God because you're ashamed. When we have this altar call in a minute. You need to come and you need to ask for repentance and get rid of that shame. Because this day of consecration has to start with you presenting yourself approved. Approved. How am I approved with it, John? You don't know the things I've done. Jesus died for your sins. And if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus, he's already approved you. You've repented. You, you just need to come and you need to become clean in Jesus again. That's what repentance is for. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus and you're walking around ashamed, today is the day of salvation. We need to make up that mindset. We need to make, and your consecration is fine. You can do it. Consecration is being set apart. It's being made holy. And that's fine. But my prayer is going to be that as you set yourself apart, that you recognize that there is a need to have access to the sound wisdom that God is generating for your life. And in order for you to have that access, you need to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ over your life. And that means baptism in Jesus' name. That means his blood over your life. That means you have access to enter into the kingdom of God because your name is written in the book of life. And this last bit, 
came to me as I was sitting there. And Brother Brian, I hadn't read your text yet. It's probably out in the back waiting for me to finish up. But when he told me his little boy was feeling great, I just lost it and I praised God. I said, God, what is this message for today? What is this message for today? And he took me straight to Paul's last trip in that ship. He told them it's not the right time to leave, but they didn't believe him anyhow. It says in Acts 27, 12, and because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest and spend winter there. And by chance, they left. Is that where your wisdom is? Is that where your wisdom lies? Because Paul said, no, it's not the right time because he had sound wisdom. I don't know why we went through everything we went through this week, Sister Victoria. I don't know why we all got sick the way we got sick. And I told Brother Aguilar, if this is any indication of what 2024 is going to be like, it's going to be hard and there's going to need to be a fight. But when God took me to the scripture... It says they tried everything they could when they ran into the storm. They started throwing things off the boat. They started doing things that they could do. They started taking measurements. They did everything within their physical capacity. Until they had nothing left. And then the angel of the Lord comes to Paul and says, The Lord has granted your life and says, You're not done yet. You've got to go to Rome and you've got to testify about my goodness and about my grace. And because you have to be there, God's given you every soul on this boat. Because of your sound wisdom, church, God has given you more. God will give you more. God will give you the people in the boat as well. And there was no, there was no easiness after that one. They ran aground. They went shipwreck. They were in the water floating around until they got to the, the shore. And then once they got to shore, the people weren't bitten by snakes, but Paul was bitten by snakes. And there's a reason why the people weren't bitten, but Paul was. Hold on, hold on. Paul was bit. Because the safety of God was already there to protect him. The safety of God wasn't with the others yet because they had not yet received the sound wisdom of God. They were about to, but they hadn't yet. And so you want to know why you're going through things? Because the soundness of God and the safety of God is already over your life. Have you considered Job? He's righteous. There's none like him in the land. Oh, yeah, but he's righteous because you protect him, God. All right, Satan, have your, have your shot. Just don't take his life because my safety has a certain point. He went through hell and back, but he did not lose his life. And the test was he did not give up sound wisdom. He remained faithful. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, the worker who has no need to be ashamed. If you're serving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, you have no reason to be ashamed, church. Just do your best. Do it better than you did before. Come on up to this altar in Jesus' name. And give your best to God. Present your best in the name of Jesus. Whatever doesn't belong, give it up. Give it away. Throw it out. Repent in Jesus' name. Let it go and let it not disturb you any longer. And take these 21 days and say, Lord, I commit myself uh, beginning tomorrow with the rest of the church, with the rest of Southern California District, and joining the Apostolic Assembly. Lord, to be a worker who's not in shame, but handling the word of truth. Consecrate us, God. Separate us, God. Let your word be in us. Uh, and let hell be as far away from us. Uh, let sin be as far away for where your word is there is purity there is truth uh, and, and evil does not belong there. For what let us give a hand praise to the Lord for that beautiful message.
for that wonderful time in God. Hallelujah. How many feel refreshed and ready for this year? Knowing that he's, he's keeping us in his soundness and therefore his security. Amen. He is our rock. He is our salvation. He is our strong fortress and we will never be shaken, says the psalmist. Amen. So this year, let us get ready for what God has for us. For it is nothing but great things. And if it, if it is challenging, hallelujah, it is not. We're not walking alone. We're not walking this road alone. But we're walking hand in hand with our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Brother Johnny, for that precious word. Let us go before the Lord one more time. Lord, we come before you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for you what you have done this service, God. We thank you for this word, Lord, that has pierced our hearts, Jesus. Let us carry it every single day. God, let us carry it, Lord, this week, Father. For those of us who are struggling, Lord, for those of us that are hurting right now, God, that you provide that shelter, that you provide that security, God, that you provide that doctrinal soundness, God, for those of us who need it, God. For only in you is we find the truth, Lord. For only in you we find safety, Father. Everything else is void. Everything else is empty. But you are full. You fill us, God. You fill our spirits. You fill our lives. You fill our bodies, God, with whatever we need, Lord. You sustain us, Jesus. Carry us through this week. Carry us through this fast, Lord, this time in consecration, God. That your name may be lifted high in this, God. That we may, may live less of our flesh, Lord, left less of us and more of you, Jesus, this year. That we may be prepared, God, for whatever you have for us, for whatever you have for your church, Lord Jesus. Whatever miracle, whatever blessing is next, God, that you prepare us, God, that you strengthen and uplift our faith, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we all pray and say, amen. God bless you.